good. It's on. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for sticking around on day three and listening to me talk about SAR ADCs. I'm going to talk about SARS specifically in the context of parallel converter arrays uh, and even further the subset that is time interleaved. Okay, so the obligatory outline slide. Uh, I'll start by talking about some background. I'm going to try and give some context, uh, historical context, if you will, first to both SAR ADCs and time interleaved arrays, or I should say parallel converter arrays. And then we'll get more into the meat of the technical content. We'll go over uh, a bunch of the error sources or error mechanisms when you put these things in parallel and expect them to look like one composite ADC. And then we'll spend the second half of the talk going over uh, techniques that people have come up with to improve both the core ADC and also the, the array of them. We'll finish up going over what I consider some of the, the best recent published work in terms of uh, time interleaved data these. Okay, so on the background, I'm first going to talk a little bit about the SAR ADC core itself, not necessarily in the context of uh, time interleaved array. Uh, and then we'll move separately to talking about parallel or interleaved arrays. And final, finally, I want to go over a little bit over a, a discussion of figure of merits. Okay, so SAR ADCs, long before they were called SAR ADCs, uh, actually existed, or at least long before the uh, algorithm was called the successive approximation algorithm, there was the feedback subtraction algorithm. This actually goes back about 500 years, so it's really old. So there was this mathematical puzzle that was circulating around mathematicians, and they said, let's determine the least number of weights with which we could uh, weigh on a scale an unknown that was somewhere between 1 and 40 pounds. So in 1556, in his treatises on numbers and measures, Tatalia proposed basically the SAR algorithm. He said, give me binary weighted weights, and I'll use them in a fashion. Uh, that we know today is the SAR algorithm. So that, that's this slide here. So we have our unknown on the, the left, oh, sorry, the right side of this scale over here. Well, let's assume X is 45. The scale really is just a comparator. It tells you which is bigger. So he's going to start with the biggest weight, 32. Put that on the left side and say, is X greater than or less than 32? In that case, uh, X would be larger. So he's going to keep that weight. He's going to retain the 32. And next trial would have the 32 plus the next half down weight, or 16. 32 plus 16 is 48. This would be rejected because the unknown, 45, is less than 48. And you'd move all the way down until you would find that he would have on the left side of the scale 32, 8 plus 4 plus 1, which is 45, and it would equal the unknown. That is the SAR algorithm, and that existed in uh, medieval times, maybe it's not medieval times, Renaissance or something like that. Uh, if we fast forward about 400 years, you can find the same algorithm, still not specifically in an A to D converter, uh, but this is in the context of co-modulation of basically a phone. So uh, no one, uh, let's see. Yeah, over here on the left is the speaker, some guy's talking into a microphone like me, and over here on the right is the guy that wants to listen to it. And you have these things uh, called selectors in this particular case. They're basically comparators with built-in thresholds connected in series. Uh, and if we go through an example, imagine now the input is it's electrical, so the input might be 45 volts instead of 45 pounds. Uh, but the numbers work out the same. So the first selector says, is the input greater than or less than 32 volts? It's greater, so its output is 32 volts. It's kind of a, um, a quantizer, a floating quantizer, because the next one compares the input 42 volt, or sorry, 45 volts between 32 and its threshold of 16 volts, which would be 48 volts is less to less than rather the 48 volts so it outputs 32 or ground relative to its um, zero relative to its ground which is 32 volts and that ripples all the way up until you find 45 volts again through the successive approximation algorithm these bits are then sent across wires to the guy who's going to listen on the other end so this is actually a digital communication quite a long time ago if you move forward a little bit further this is actually the first commercially available adc it was called the DAT rack. It happened to be a SAR ADC, a 50 kilo sample per second SAR ADC. It was massive. You can see a picture of it. It, it weighed a couple hundred pounds. It cost uh, almost $10,000 in 1960 dollars. That, that really was a lot of money. Uh, and it wasn't exactly low power. It was half a kilowatt, but then again, it used a 700 volt supply. So what do you really expect? You can go back through some of the patents and find uh, 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 some of the descriptions of the techniques that we use today, the SAR logic. Uh, the R2R ladder that was the DAC used in the feedback path. Uh, and so even though it doesn't really necessarily look like one of our ADCs today, on the on sort of a circuit diagram, it really is starting, is starting to look like what we uh, use or see in conferences today.